Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of brand new Auto Chess 2.0. I'm loving the game right now. I think it's fantastic. Uh, there's a lot of new really cool builds that I have been testing. Um, some people have recognized me in chat and said, Excalibur, why are you losing? Well, that's, that's mainly because I've been testing some builds. I want to find out if things were good. I'm actually in the process of testing a six dragon plus like siren god of thunder type build i'll keep you updated anyway guys uh, if you like the content you like auto chess content feel free to subscribe um and hit the like also leaving a comment really helps like i just love to hear what you guys think uh, i've been going back to my format of doing two times speed now uh i got mixed feedback on this sometime last time some people really liked me going two times speed uh you know so that so the games and the videos are shorter and some people didn't like that because they preferred the live gameplay um i really really want to know what you guys think i really want to know do you prefer the two times speed are the shorter videos easier for you to consume or do you prefer having the longer videos to listen to as well you know i might be able to mix it up and do um uh, the long ones as well, but actually for my recording sake, I actually really like doing two times videos because it means I can play the game without having to worry about talking to the camera so I can really concentrate because I know you guys know that I make a lot of silly mistakes um, especially when I'm talking and then I can come back and talk over the game uh, and we can have a look at the mistakes that I did make because obviously there are mis mis mistakes that I made so let's talk about this game. This is a composition that I found, I believe, the inspiration for on Reddit. Uh, I would link the thread if I could find it. So if you, if, if you go to the description and there's a link to a Reddit thread in there, that's because I found the, the, the Reddit thread that I got the inspiration from. So I can't remember the user, but whoever you are, I know that you uh, were talking about building this composition on the Auto Chess subreddit. And I was like, that seems like a really good comp. Like, so I'm not, I didn't invent this composition. I found it on Reddit, but I put it into practice. So I was like, okay, this seems like a really, really good composition. So we're going to try it out. Now, I wasn't originally going to build that in this game. I was thinking to myself, I, I really want to try six dragons, fool and witcher. So you know that I was, t I was talking about trying to do a six dragon build. Well, imagine six dragons, but then you just like, what you do is you get the six dragons. And then after the six dragons, you just put units in that have really good ultimates that you want to be cast immediately. One of which would be fool and witcher, you know, things like God of thunder that kind of thing fallen which are casting immediately means you don't need any mana generation on him and you can just put all of your defense and offense items on him uh, and it just seems like it would be a really strong build so that's what i'm thinking about testing uh in the future might need to do it in a casual anyway now we're, we're sort of i went past the early rounds didn't really talk about them much because there wasn't much going on essentially right now i'm just trying to uh, put anything in that is good so level one fallen witcher is decent level one um uh, Dwarf Sniper is decent. They're, they're, they're really good units. And what you can see here is I've actually now got Umbra and also Soul Reaper. So Umbra and Soul Reaper is going to give me the Agersis bonus early on. And now that I've got Umbra, I could also potentially look for a 3 Hunter build, even if I don't intend on using 3 Hunter throughout the remainder of the game. Now, I just sold off my double Souls Breaker there because I have uh, now figured out that obviously um, I could get to 10 gold. I want to make sure I meet some gold thresholds. I, you know, when I assess the relative strength of my composition right now, I'm actually not insanely strong. I've only got one two-star unit. The rest of the units that I'm working with are just good one-cost units. Um, and as you can see here, this guy starts with his uh, God of War 2 to clean me up. I, I actually can't get through this guy and end up losing. So it was good that I sold to get to, get to 10 gold here because now I've buffered the fact that I've lost with a little bit of um, gold from the um, a little bit of gold coming from my uh, passive income from having 10 gold so you can see I sold off the double water spirit here you make decisions based on what you think where you think your comp is going by round 10 I very quickly realized that I'm very likely to be playing yet another hunter agursus build but I, I I was very adamant that I didn't want to play uh, the, the the Hunter Agursus builds that you've been seeing, the six Hunter Agursus builds that I've been playing on the channel over the last two videos, even though I think they're a great build. And then I saw this guy. I saw that guy, that guy that I just got beaten by who had uh, Evil Knight and Argali Knight on the field. And I was like, wait a second. That reminds me of the four Knight, three Hunter, three Dragon, four Agursus, two Warlock build that I saw on Reddit. And I was like, that actually seems like a really strong build. And it means you don't need to compete and search for Tsunami Stalker to make the comp good. You only need Umbra, Agersis Ranger, and Dwarf Sniper. And you don't even really need them at level 3. You can have them at level 2. The only problem is that you're going to be competing for Hell Knight, which is the biggest the biggest one that you're going to be competing for. Argali Knight 
Glacier Knight players don't really go for. And Evil Knight, they very rarely look for a three star, so you can you can pr pretty much always guarantee that you're going to get a two star Evil Knight. The only one that you're going to have to compete for is Hell Knight. Uh, you don't need Hell Knight at level three, but obviously it would be a level three target. In this build, your level three targets are uh, Dwarf Sniper first, Aegis Ranger, and Hell Knight of uh, of equal value, and then Umbra. Those would be your three uh, your three star targets. Um, you saw the build at the start on the top of the screen. Um, you guys can go and uh, look back and, and check that full build. It is a very, I think, a very strong build and actually beats Glacier Knights. Now, the reason it beats Glacier Knights is because it has four Agursis, so you have big armor reduction. You've got four Knights, and all of the Knights are the Tank Knights. So you're not even using Frost Knight and Lightblade Knight. You're using just the Tank Knights. Those Tank Knights um, are going to buy you a lot of time versus Glacier Knight players. And then you also have the Dwarf Sniper, who's going to immediately target the, the, the weakest p members of a Glacier Knight comp. Uh, and then you also get the Warlock bonus later on when you buy Frostfire Dragon. So let's talk, take stock of where I am in the game right now. Essentially what you've seen is, is something that I really preach doing, even if your economy is close to 50. I like to level up on curve to at least level 7. And you're going to see why. Um simply because it helps you when your composition as a whole is pretty weak and you can see here now that i've decided okay yep yeah, this is where i'm going to start subbing in the knights so my composition as a whole is quite weak right now i've just got one costs i do have three hunter four agursis which is great but i don't have any two stars no two stars in this comp whatsoever um, but leveling up to level seven has given me a man advantage and also allowed me to activate certain synergies that i might not have been able to do so before uh, in the case of this synergy that i've got on the board right now I could have done that. I could have very easily done that at level 6. But having two Umbras on the field gives me a bit more tanky frontline. And what you're going to see here is being level 7 also gives me um, essentially some extra padding versus the Wolves. The Wolf round is risky if you aren't level 7. Uh, especially if you're in the situation that I'm in where your comp isn't exactly brimming with two stars. Uh, and actually you can see right now that it, I very, very swiftly managed to make my way through the wolf round even with just one cost unit, uh, one star units in the field. So that's why I would always recommend going to level 7 at round 13. Uh, and actually by the time that I get to round 16, I'm back to 50 gold anyway. So I didn't really take that much of a hit for my economy and I've, I've put a lot of investment into protecting my HP. The piece of advice that I've been telling myself recently when I've been thinking about playing greedy has been this you can't play greedy when you're dead so it's much much better to protect your life total where you can uh, and what i'm doing right now is what you're seeing is I'm, I'm generally trying to protect my life total as much as possible by leveling up early and now i'm at 50 gold i have two options this composition comes online at about round so about level nine because you need to have the frostfire dragon in there so you really need to get level nine to make this composition work this composition functions perfectly fine at uh at level eight you just don't get the dragon bonus you get the four knights dragon knight will be there as a good tank but you just don't get the the, the dragon bonus which helps to immediately get some frontline with umbro and obviously it's pretty good when you're running dragon knight to have the dragon bonus so this composition really comes online at level nine but it's it, it functions perfectly okay at level uh, at level eight so i'm going to talk about itemization now uh most of your items should go on Dwarf Sniper, um, just because he's one of your three-star targets. Defensive items should go on Hell Knight and Evil Knight, or any of your knights, really. It actually doesn't matter, but I just like to put them on Hell Knight because he's my level three, uh, he's my level three focus. And then all of your um, uh, defensive items should really go on to, uh, sorry, offensive items should really go on to your Dwarf Sniper. Obviously, Halberd is pretty easy to get right now, uh, but to be honest with you, your front line is so tanky that Dwarf Sniper should be able to outlast the Halberd, which is obviously very important. So I pick up the the uh, evil or the Hell Knight here. I've got two of them on my bench. Not actually going to play them right now. Uh, I could take an Umbra off for a Hell Knight if I wanted to, but actually I just prefer having the extra damage, and actually Hell Knight doesn't benefit my Knights any more than just two right now. So once I get to level 8 and I find Dragon Knight, that's where I'll bring Hell Knight and Dragon Knight on, and that'll give me the four Knight front line. This composition is all about having a good tanky knight front line to buy time for your Dwarf Sniper in the back with four Agursis to just rip through the entire enemy team. So I'm not actually going to level up on this round right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the natural one experience for beating the uh, Lethal Ursa, and then I'm going to just roll down to 50, because at this point in time, the only two-star that I've got, sorry, the, the two two-stars that I've got is Dwarf Sniper and Agursis Ranger. Agursis Ranger two-star is okay, but she's like she's like a secondary carry, or even like a tertiary carry. She doesn't really do much in this comp. So I'm looking to now get my front line up to... Uh, 
There we go. With, with Dragon Knight especially, we now have four knights. I'm looking to get my front line up to uh, up to level two as quickly as possible. And you can see here, that's what I'm going to do with getting Umbra. Um, and also, I pick up a, a lot of extra good things. That egg uh, is used for a couple of things. When you get an egg in this composition, it should be used for a couple of things. Uh, you can use it to save and get your Dwarf Sniper to level uh, 3. It could be like a, a catalyst for level 3 Dwarf Sniper. Uh, in my case, it is going to be getting my it's going to be getting my um, Dragon Knight to level 2. That That is only really important when you've actually got the Dragon Bonus online. Uh, or at least I think it's using my Dragon Knight to level 2. It could also be used to getting Frostfire Dragon to level 2. Um, Frostfire Dragon level 2 is a pretty nice upgrade because the wall gets an increase. And I will talk extensively about Frostfire Dragon once we get him on the board. Um, it's a very interesting unit. Uh, it massively, massively screws with positioning. I'm, I am really, like, I actually really like the unit. Um, mainly because it, it, it just does, it just screws with positioning. It makes your positioning weird, and it makes the enemy's positioning weird. And I'm going to, I'm going to talk about why that is when we get there but it essentially it can it can be really good for you or it can be really bad for you depending on the comps that you're facing and depending on um how you position it so i will talk about frostfire dragon positioning when we get there but just know that it's not always a good like frostfire dragon is not always good for you sometimes you, depending on your placement it can be really bad um so i'm going to start giving my defensive itemization over to my hell knight now because that's kind of what i wanted to do like i i have now got four Hell Knights in total. I've got five Dwarf Snipers, so they're going to be my obvious level two uh, focus. And you can see right here versus a Glacier Knight player, we are tearing them apart. Um, the good thing about Umbra versus Glacier Knight is she's really only weak to Lightblade Knight. Um, otherwise, Umbra is, in, Umbra is like a really, really, really good unit versus Glacier Knight because she just distracts the, the Knights. Anything that distracts the Knights from actually hitting things is always really good. Or hit, hitting things that count. So now I've gone up to level 9. I haven't got a dragon to put in just yet. Uh, I actually think it's better to just have two two-star dwarf snipers in. Because um, dwarf snipers both are going to benefit from the hunter bonus. Both going to benefit from the aggressive bonus. Uh, I'm actually going to give the extra attack speed, of course, over to my... Um, over to my... Uh, what's he called as well? So I actually find uh, a dragon. And then I decide to do decide to use the egg on my dragon knight. So now I've got the dragons activated. Uh, I'm putting Venom in over Winter Caropteran because Venom is a better individual standalone dragon. Uh, but we will eventually replace that for Frostfire Dragon. Frostfire Dragon is really, really good in this comp because not only does it activate the dragon bonus, but it also gives us the Warlock bonus, which is going to be massive, especially alongside the double frantic mask that I have on my Dwarf Sniper. So you can see now I'm just basically searching. Um, there are units that I'm looking for specifically. Uh, I don't need to go to level 10. This composition doesn't actually benefit really from going to level 10. What you could add at level 10 is like a, a, a utility unit, like a Storm Shaman or a Dark Spirit or something like that. But otherwise, it doesn't really need to go to level 10. Uh, but you can see we're pretty much beating everybody right now. And for the most part, my uh, the entire that entire round, my... Um, Dwarf Sniper apparently spent hexed, so I'm 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 kind of in an awkward spot on the bench right now because I'm trying to I'm trying to three star too many units. That's the problem. Um, what you'll see me do eventually is just give up on the Agassiz Ranger because he's not really crucial. Give up on the Evil Knight. Give up on the Umbra because then just I'm just not going to get them to le uh, to level three and they don't really matter compared to the other things. So let's talk about Frostfire Dragon Wall. Frostfire Dragon when you have the dragon bonus, will immediately cast a wall directly to the right, the, to the row to the right of where he currently is. Um, that wall will force units to jump through it because you can you cannot attack anything on the other side of the wall. So we're going to watch here. So watch my Hell Knight get obliterated and then his entire composition jumps over the wall because his, you, you cannot use any ranged attacks through the wall. Um, and that's a problem. I think I actually end up losing this one. Yeah, I end up losing this one because of because of that placement of the wall. I basically screwed my backline really hard because of the placement of the wall there. So you have to basically find a way of using that wall to isolate your enemy's units so that you can focus down a certain part of their composition. Um, it's very difficult to find the, the right positioning depending on who you're facing but even on neutral rounds you see my entire comp had to jump over the wall now when you jump through that wall you take damage if you're the enemy team obviously your team does not take damage when they jump through it um, what i'm doing here is i'm actually moving my frostfire dragon out a little bit what this is going to do is this is going to isolate 
one line of the enemy's enemy um enemy's corner if they are in that side of things it doesn't really work as well versus assassins and you can see here that versus assassins it would have been better to have it closer just because they don't really get separated um but if an enemy is stacked up in the top right corner on my board what i'm trying to do with this placement is isolate um is isolate the enemy comp uh, i'm trying to isolate at least some of their units so that my uh, dwarf sniper can focus them down like right here, it didn't really do anything apart from forcing the Berserker back over the wall. It also is pretty good versus Glacier Knights because if, if Glacier Knights end up passing through the wall, what happens to them is they get their attack speed slowed by 30%. So that gives me uh, an initial start against the Glacier Knight comp of actually already putting them on the back foot. So I'm now just desperately searching for... Uh, Dwarf snipers and anything, and trying to go for you know, trying to go for as many um, three stars as possible. I sacrifice my Agassiz Ranger because I don't really need her to be three star. And uh, now I've got the dwarf sniper. So watch this: my Galling Knight goes down, then they jump over the wall and get an attack speed reduction and take damage. Um, in the meantime, my comp has just been focusing what is it, whatever was left on the other side of the wall. So it's good it's good with knights because if i get a, a lucky knight shield proc on one of my knights, they buy a lot of time for my comp to kill everything that is to the left of the wall. And then they all have to jump over the wall, take damage, and they have their attack speed slowed. Um, and so I'm looking at the other the other people's uh, composition placements, and I end up putting my Frostfire Dragon right here on the left. What this does is it completely isolates the Lightblade Knight. Lightblade Knight was stuck on that side of the wall, and my Dwarf Sniper obliterated her. Absolutely obliterated her. Um, and what that ended up meaning is that they didn't actually have any DPS in that Glacier Knight comp. So now both of the Glacier Knight comps are dead, uh, and so I probably want to start changing the placement of my Frostfire Dragon. The reason is I'm going up against Assassins. Um, and the Frostfire Dragon placement you're going to find right now is not particularly good, uh, well, actually, after we kill the um, the Black Dragon. What I find is that the Frostfire placement of right on the left-hand side of the wall is not particularly good versus Assassins because it means that my Dwarf Sniper can't attack anything. If there is no one on the left side of the wall and I keep my Frostfire Dragon in this place, my Frostfire, my my, uh, my Dwarf Sniper is going to have to jump over the wall and put himself like right in the fire in it, firing line of assassins so this is not actually the best place to have <laughs> not actually the best place to have the uh the frostfire dragon versus assassins because it means my dwarf sniper actually has to jump into the battle to actually get um to actually get uh, working so i i move my frostfire dragon back over to the right a little bit which is now going to give me a small area of safety for my um for my dwarf sniper if any assassins want to jump over the wall to get to him they're going to have an attack speed slow and it also means that anybody that's on this side of the wall is going to get focused down in this case it was a very quick focus down of the water spirit and the rest of the time my comp just managed to jump over the wall and uh, and take him down and that is the end of the comp that was really good and the way that you play this from the early game is you just play knights or whatever you've got and then transition into hunters with the knight front line really strong comp honestly and and i think a little bit off meta the only problem is it does kind of borrow units from very contested comps right now, so you do have to be aware of that.